Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. The story this video is adapted from can be found on The Athletic. The Athletic is a subscription-based sports news site delivering insider articles and podcasts that you can't find anywhere else, and you can customize it to follow your favorite team. It has no ads, no clickbait, just great stories. Using the link below, you can get a free 7-day trial. And for Football Made Simple viewers, you can get a 50% discount after that. Visit theathletic.co.uk slash footballmadesimple to get the discount and help support the channel. From 2010 to 2020, there was only one contender for word of the decade in terms of football tactics, Gagin pressing. If you'd said that word in 2009, outside Germany at least, no one would have had the slightest clue what you were talking about. Not merely because the term hadn't migrated abroad yet, but also because of the other major issue. German football was, in 2009, something of an afterthought. Just four years later, when Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich contested the Champions League final at Wembley in 2013, German football was suddenly on top of the world. A year later, Germany would triumph at the World Cup, and by that stage, Bayern had become the most tactically interesting club in Europe. But more than the national side, and more than Bayern, it was Jurgen Klopp's Dortmund who truly epitomized Germany's newfound status as a revered, progressive, and exciting footballing nation. Klopp had taken charge of Dortmund back in 2008. At this stage, Dortmund were a shadow of their former self, financially struggling and often languishing in the bottom half of the table. His transformation of the club was remarkable. He based his side around a core of young players, some dependable foot soldiers in wide positions, and compensated for the lack of star quality with an emphasis upon intensity, hard work, and good organization. Most intriguing, though, was his emphasis upon Gagin pressing. It's not rocket science. When you lose the ball, you want to regain it as quickly as possible. And it would be unreasonable to suggest this idea was exclusive to Dortmund or exclusive to German football. Pep Guardiola was emphasizing the same thing at Barcelona. But Guardiola spoke about regaining possession immediately because Barcelona's side wasn't defensively strong, at least not in the traditional sense. Klopp spoke about Gagin pressing as an attacking tactic, a way to catch the opposition off guard. When the other side was starting their transition into attack, they were at their most vulnerable to Dortmund pouncing. And this was an area in which Klopp's Dortmund and German football more widely became experts. They were brilliantly efficient at transitions, whether winning the ball in advanced positions in the manner of Gagin pressing or springing forward from deep in the more typical counter-attacking situations. Dortmund were a machine, but they were also attractive, likeable and played with passion and heart. Klopp turned Dortmund into a club that everybody wanted to see succeed. The classic Dortmund formation was 4-2-3-1, which was essentially a 4-4-1-1 in defensive situations and 4-2-4 in attack, with the wingers speeding up and down the pitch accordingly. Although the team was recognized for their high pressing, they were dangerous with the ball at their feet, and they were lethal in attack as shown by them scoring 67, 80, and then 81 goals in these league seasons, while having relatively high levels of possession. When they had the ball deep, Roman Weidenfaller was very much a traditional keeper, not wanting to get too involved in the build-up play as he was technically limited. The fullbacks advanced slightly higher in this phase as they waited for the play to develop. Subotic and Hummels were a solid pairing throughout these seasons, with Hummels definitely being the more gifted on the ball, so Weidenfeller would look to filter the ball out to him. In the midfield, Sven Bender was a constant throughout Klopp's peak Dortmund, being the engine of the team, mainly for his defensive solidity, but while being just as capable on the ball, receiving it under pressure and keeping it simple to rotate the ball. However, the man next to him in the double pivot was the player to keep the team moving forward. Initially, this was Nuri Shahin, who enjoyed a stellar 2010-11 season before shipping off to Real Madrid, and Ilkay Gundogan was brought in from Nuremberg and adapted from a 10 to a more traditional 8. Both of these players played in a similar way, being the ideal deep playmaker for Klopp, looking to pick the ball up deep and transition into the attacking areas as quickly as possible. Initially, Lukas Barrios was the forward, and Lewandowski soon came in, but both were industrious, willing to make runs off the last man or into the channels, which the deep playmakers could look to pick out with a well-weighted long ball. But the relationship between Gundogan and Hummels was crucial. Often teams recognized Gundogan as the metronome and would look to position a man on him to limit his impact. 
In these cases, Gunduan often moved into wider regions, which had been vacated by the advancing fullbacks, and Hummels was comfortable bringing the ball out from the back to begin the attacking phase of play. If the opposition sat on Hummels instead, Gunduan or Sahin's role became even more crucial, moving into space to give them an outlet. Moving higher up the pitch, the fullbacks become even more important. When Kevin Grosskreutz was primarily the left winger, he tended to hug the wing and was hard working getting up and down the pitch. As a result, Schmalzer could afford to be slightly more conservative. But once Marco Royce came in, he stayed higher up the pitch and tended to tuck infield. And as a result, Schmalzer was more involved in the attacking play as he often overlapped to provide the width. Kuba Blaschikowski on the right had pace to burn and was capable of getting in behind the opposition when the ball was played long. But he was also often instructed to tuck in slightly. This narrow shape meant that teams often had a decision to make. Leaving their fullbacks wide here would be pointless and leave them outnumbered in the center of the pitch, so they tended to tuck in to follow the wingers in field. This left space for the fullbacks to attack, and of course the opposition's wingers aren't the best at tracking back. Schmelzer had a great whipping delivery with his left foot, and Pishek, originally a winger, could do similar on the right hand side. The men in the center could then look to flood the box to get on the end of these crosses. But in this congested center is where the technical ability of Goetze, Royce and Lewandowski came to the fore. Gundogan was often pushed higher to give them numbers in these areas and all of them were constantly on the move to receive the ball and create space for others. Goetze often drifted wide to the space vacated by Royce to potentially create an overload whilst Lewandowski waited for the perfect time to make a run off of the defender. At the same time, Royce was also a threat with his long-range shooting, but their narrow attacking stance facilitated the Gagan press when they did lose the ball. Not only were most of the players good on the ball, they were all willing to work hard and smart towards the team's goals. The compact center when attacking meant that when they did lose the ball here, they had several players in close proximity to each other and to the ball, allowing them to collapse around the ball whilst the defense pushed their line high. It was a fairly man-oriented press, although they also looked to cut off passing lanes when they could. Despite having top 3 league levels of possession, they also had the top 2 highest amounts of tackles per game, showing their front foot nature. When they won the ball high, there would inevitably be gaps behind the opposition, and with the pace of Royce, Lewandowski and Kuba, combined with the passing of Goethe and Royce, they were dangerous in these phases. They were consistently near the top of the league for shots per game from counter-attacking situations. Their crowning glory came when they thrashed Bayern 5-2 in the German Cup Final to complete the double in May 2012. It was an absurdly dominant performance in a brilliant end-to-end -end game, characterized by Dortmund's wingers breaking forward in behind Bayern's fullbacks to combine with Kagawa, who drifted laterally into pockets of space and wreaked havoc on the counter-attack. It was their fifth straight victory over Bayern, home and away in both of their title winning campaigns, then in that final. Dortmund had woefully underperformed in the Champions League that season, however, and 2012-13 was about competing in continental competition. Sometimes Dortmund got lucky. A last gasp win over Malaga stands out in particular, but their 4-1 thrashing of Real Madrid in the semi-final first leg will live long in the memory. It was the perfect combination of Dortmund's systematic pressing and Lewandowski's ability to turn half chances into goals. They utterly blew Real away, although would subsequently lose 2-1 to Bayern in the final, in a game where Dortmund started both halves brilliantly, but then tired dramatically. Tiredness would increasingly become a major factor in Dortmund's inability to keep up with Bayern. It didn't help, of course, that Bayern started picking off Dortmund's best players, but the most important thing they stole was Klopp's focus on Gagan pressing. Bayern are like the Chinese in industry, Klopp once complained, they see what others are doing and copy it, so they can follow the same plan but with more money. Klopp's approach has inspired Dortmund's rivals and many other sides across Europe. I hope you enjoyed this look back at one of the cult teams of recent years. If you did, you could get more stories like this from The Athletic by visiting theathletic.co.uk slash footballmadesimple to get a 50% discount and to help support the channel. Which other teams would you like to see covered in the Classic Team series? Drop it down in the comments below. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.